Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with my 2011 ML Class W164 chassis Mercedes Benz and we are going to be installing a new PCV valve into this vehicle today. Now as you can see, for this job today I've actually purchased a genuine Mercedes Benz part here. It's an A642-010-1791 and I purchased this part from Amazon at about the third of the cost as if I'd gone to the Mercedes dealership. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can purchase this part. So let's get into it. Obviously the first thing we need to do is to get this cover off. And then we've got exposure to the engine. Now the reason that I am replacing this valve is you may have seen a few weeks back I replaced the fuel filter. And when I had that off and all of this air intake, I noticed that there was a fair bit of oil sitting inside the turbo. So when I've done some research, I can see that this valve does fail. So the PCV valve exists to release crankcase ventilation vapor out of the crankcase. Now that's a perfectly normal thing. All engines will actually have a little bit of blow by. Now, previously in days gone by, engines would just vent that to the atmosphere. But with EPA regulations and the like, what the manufacturers have to do nowadays, they have to reburn that crankcase ventilation. Now what happens in a modern turbo engine is that when this valve starts to fail, it actually allows the turbo to suck crankcase oil. And that's what's starting to occur in this engine. So basically the crankcase ventilation valve is right at the back left and it flows through this tube here and into the side here of the uh, turbo. Now, when you've got the case where that's failing with excessive oil coming through that crankcase ventilation valve, what actually happens and starts to happen is it comes into the turbo and then it comes around through your intercooler pipe. And then obviously it can start clogging up your intercooler. So normally if it's just crankcase ventilation, the engine will just burn the excess oil. But when that valve is failing and you're actually sucking up crankcase oil, what it will actually do is it actually runs through the exhaust because it doesn't get fully burned and actually starts to clog up your DPF. So then you end up with DPF failures as well. So that's why you need to get onto this early folks, just like I'm doing here, and you need to get that valve replaced. So to do this job, we're gonna get all of this air intake off. I'm actually going to remove the complete air filter assembly on the left-hand side, just to get access. We're gonna take this firewall panel out um, so that we can really get in behind to get that PCV valve out. So to start with, let's get all the clips undone. Get the electrical connections off of the mass airflow sensors. Now, if you haven't done this before, you've got to pull that little gray tab back and then you press down on that tab at the same time. We then need to get a screwdriver onto that clamp that goes in for the uh, main turbo inlet there and just loosen that off. To get this air box out, there are two E10s. You may have seen the video which I did on replacing the air filters, which I took that out. So you would have seen this before. So there's one at the front and one right down the back. Uh, to get to the one at the back, you're gonna need to take that firewall panel out. And to get even better access, you can see I've just raised up the bonnet to the vertical position. If you've never done that before, you've got this red button on the strut here. So with the bonnet up out of the way, it's a 10 mil screw in behind the uh, firewall there. So I just wanna get that out. And the one over here. And then straight away you can see that firewall piece drop down so you can pull that out. And that just gives you heaps of access through that top point there to get down in to do everything we need. So with that firewall panel removed, you can now access down to that uh, screw there. Now that's the E10, so it can get in through the top and we can get easy access to the E10 at the front to get that complete air box assembly out of the way for us. So something that I will add folks is that earlier models of the uh, W164 chassis and other vehicles with the OM642 engine, they do have a slightly different PCV valve. It's a plastic enclosure. It's in roughly the same spot at the back left of the engine there, but instead of being at the back of the head, 
it actually sits on top of the head. So it's actually an easier job than this vehicle. But basically, the procedure is the same as what we're doing today here with the later model OM642 engine, which has this metal cased PCV valve. So either or folks, both of these valves fail. The rubber diaphragms on the inside fail, so you really do need to replace them if they're you know somewhere between seven and ten years old and haven't been replaced before. Just pull off the air intake ducting into that air box. Alright, and we've got that air box completely out there. Just remove that back electrical connection. And now we should be able to pull the intake off completely. Now with that off, just show you, you can see that oil sitting inside the turbo. That's what I was talking about. And you can see here that this is where the PCV comes in and comes into the side of that plastic air intake. So we'll now take that out just like this. There you go. And you can see the oil around that. Clearly the oil in the turbo there. Now I've shown you that, so I'm just gonna quickly wipe that oil up, because I actually don't want that dripping down. That can cause other problems if that gets down into the swell flap motor, etc. So just wipe that excessive oil up. And I also wanna quickly, before I do too much, show you that excessive amount of oil sitting in that crankcase ventilation tube, which feeds straight into that inlet. So you can see that oil is pulled up in there. That's crankcase oil. That is not crankcase vapor. So clearly we do need to replace this part as it becomes effective. So the PCV valve is right at the back here on the left hand side. So you can see why I've wanted to remove the whole left air filter box. What I'm now gonna do is actually remove, or just take out the bolts that hold the bracket for these electrical connections, just so that we can actually not completely remove it, but just move it out of the way enough to be able to wriggle to get the sockets down onto the crankcase ventilation valve to get that off. As you can see, I actually had to undo the electrical connections there on this bracket because to get to the bolts to remove the brackets, the electrical connections were actually in the road. Uh, so thank you, Mercedes, for making this easy uh, job as possible. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is just remove that connector off the bracket. There's a little black clip underneath, which you need to obviously push to one side and then that'll come off and get that all the way out. And then you can see the PCV valve, which does have a bit of oily residue over it, so I would suggest that the seal was actually leaking, the O-ring, anyway. So, good job we we're uh, replacing this. All right, that's out the way. We can move this now just completely out the way, and we can get into the bolts for the PCV valve. All right, now I believe they are E10s as well, and you don't want to drop these ones. What a pain that was to get that bolt out. That was in the most awkward spot and you could hardly even get the socket onto it. You saw how I really battled. And there at the end, I was just really careful not to drop that because that's the last thing you want to drop that who knows where it would end up. So I got it out. Now let's get the second one out. Sorry, I just couldn't even get the camera in there. If I show you the new valve, you can see I just had to really go by feel knowing that there's one bolt there and one bolt down here. Now, I'm gonna get the second one out now. Hopefully the second one's gonna be a little bit easier right down there. So, let's see how we go.
Fortunately, as soon as I've cracked the second one, I can actually turn it by hand, and that's far easier than getting the socket onto it. And there we go. Got the second one out. What a challenge that was. couple little light taps and that's come straight out let's have a look between the new one and the old one let's have a look at the difference so we've got the obviously the new one on the right there the old one on the left you can see straight away that with the new one that inner rubber diaphragm on the outside there is uh, quite worn away on the old one you can see the circles come far further in on the new one i'd say that's could either be one of two things there's a slight design change or in fact the old one has just folded in let's have a closer look yeah you can see the old one has folded in, in over time and it's become in fact really hard that rubber so no wonder this has stopped working you can see it's all oily obviously that o-ring there is really flattened out whereas if you look to the the new one, it's a nice O-ring. So this whole thing was actually beginning to leak crankcase oil and vapor at the back of the engine as well. So let's get this in and let's get this reassembled. Just a slight compare of the part numbers. So the old ones are A642 010 manufactured date of 2010. So it is the original that's come on the car, never been replaced. And we can see the new one's actually an updated part number. You can see it's a A612 01D1791. And you can see it's manufacture date is 23rd 11 20. We'll just get a bit of that crankcase oil and just a bit of lubrication on that O ring just so that it slides in nicely there. Wow, that wasn't much easier getting those bolts back in. I was just super careful. I've got them finger tight now. I was super careful because I didn't want to drop those bolts down into the engine or the back of the engine or the trays um, where I'd probably lose them. So they're in finger tight now. Sorry I couldn't film it. It's, you know, so hard to get the camera into a good angle. It'd be near on impossible for me to get the camera in there to show you. But you can see the principle of what I've done. You can see where it is, the valve. I've shown you it is. So I think I've shown you enough detail. It's E10 pretty hard to get to those bolts it'll be hard for anyone um, but a little bit of perseverance I've got there in the end now so I just need to get the socket onto it the E10 socket onto it and get those done up tight all right so a bit of a struggle but got there in the end and I've got those both done up tight with the socket so PCV valve is installed on the back of the head there. Now it's just a matter of getting everything reassembled. All right, so now let's get this bracket back into position, which holds all of these sensors here. First of all, I'm gonna put the, obviously, the bolts back in without dropping them. Can't emphasize enough how important it is at this stage to be so super careful, because we really don't wanna drop these bolts 
besides the fact that you could lose them down in the back of the engine, you know, if you're a weekend warrior like myself, you know, there's gonna be no chance of Mercedes being open to actually get the right bolt to go back in if you lose it. So, need the car Monday morning, be super careful. Now, thanks to Mercedes, we had the dumbest of clip installed right in the way. So now let's reinstall that so we can actually get this all reassembled. Get that cable reinstalled. Got the bolts go back in that sensor there. And that's a straight 10 mil, not the E10. Not quite sure why Mercedes swap between the two. Is what it is. And we are good to go to reassemble the air filter box and all of the Y plastic turbo intake air ducting, hook up all of the math sensors. Um, and yeah, let's see how it goes. So I'll just show you in close what I'm doing. I've actually just connected the right air box completely. Now we're just plugging in the PCV hose into the side of that plastic wire intake. And then you've got to be really careful as we get the uh, Y plastic onto the main turbo seal, not to actually put a slice through that or anything. All right, so stupid me didn't realize that the new PCV valve didn't actually come with that little seal there. So I'm just gonna nick the seal, that red seal you can see on the end of the PCV valve. I'm gonna nick that off the old one. We should actually put new PCV valve and a new big turbo seal. I'll do that in another video, folks. Um, the, P the actual turbo seal on this car is not that old. It's probably about, I don't know, 12, 18 months old. So, but we'll put, new ones on later on which for now we're going to nick the one off the old pcv valve so you can see i should have cottoned on earlier that that didn't actually have one of these seals on it so let's just pop that on there now just like that so that's the old one like i said i would have preferred if i'd known if i'd worked it out i would have actually bought a new one um, but we'll do that in another video we'll buy a new one Get that now installed firmly in the Y pipe. You can't really see what you're doing. You kind of have to do this stage by, by feel. Get that electrical connector plugged in the top. Just getting that E10 back in the back of that filter box there. Just get the one in the front here on that air box. Of course, we don't want to figure get the uh, firewall piece, so get that back in. Just in the slot like that. And as we know, that firewall piece is a 10 mil. Get these clips done up on the left side. And the final thing to do is to grab the screwdriver and to do up that main turbo seal. And there we go. So always goods have a really thorough look when you finish a job like this. You've actually reconnected everything. So just checking around, got the firewall back on, but I haven't put the rubber. Push the rubber back down, so let's push the rubber down. So the rubber there for the bonnet. All right, so air box is on, Y intake. Air box on, but I haven't done the clip up on this side. So let's just do the clips up. All right, so check all the electrical connections. One, two, three. We've got the main turbo seal done up. Looking under here, you can see the PCV valve is nicely inserted to that Y pipe. You can see that's pushed in nicely. Check all the electrical connections at the back where the PCV valve got disconnected because I had to take all of that bracket off and all of those extra connections. So we've got the one, two, three, 
completely connected up. So that's all looking good. So with everything checked over thoroughly, let's start the car. And as always, just doing a thorough inspection as the car's running. Just to check for any leaks, anything that I'm not quite sure of. You can see the PCB bound right at the back in there. No oil miss. Everything looks really good. So the final thing to do is pop the engine cover back on. And we are good to go. Obviously you put the bonnet up into the upright position, just to let it down, you press that red button. And then that latches it back into the normal open position. So good to go to close the bonnet. So there you go folks, that's how to change the PCV valve, or as some people call it, the oil separator in your W164 ML class chassis vehicle. Now time to take the car for a test drive, but all's looking good. So if you have liked this video folks, do feel free to like, share and subscribe. This is a really important piece of maintenance item as you can see, so that you don't get oil sucking into the turbo through the system, crankcase oil that you shouldn't be sucking because of the valve failing, and therefore downstream it would cause Massive oil loss, but also block up your DPF filter. Critical piece of maintenance. If you have liked this video, do feel free to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, have a good evening.